I don't think consumers differentiate between 85, 95, and 90. People only differentiate between zero and hundred. At the top, there's only room for one, right? I believe in India, 80% of celebrity usage in advertising that I see is not thought. Through. Creating is easy. What to create is a million-dollar question. Hi. You're listening to Marketing with Vani, in which I speak to marketing gurus. Together, we decode how marketing works in the real world to grow your business. Dhruv Chitkopekar is the founder of Collective Artists Network, a company previously called as Quan. He spent close to two decades representing some of India's top celebrities, and has facilitated over a thousand deals. between celebrities and brands so who better than him to understand how celebrities view brand tie ups what should a brand look for how should a brand make the best use of celebrity endorsement and everything in the world of brands and celebrities listen on just today i was having a conversation with someone with a potential client and he was talking to me fairly well funded a fair amount of money in the bank and a big badge agency working with them making ads and all of that and now everybody feels that in order to break clutter one must sign up as celebrities the question he asked me was in order to be noticeable break clutter and get credibility is signing up as a celebrity the only way to go it's become almost fashionable to hate on celebrity endorsements hasn't it See, here's the simple truth, Vani. The simple truth is that uh, no, you don't have to use a celebrity to break clutter, um, as is the case that you don't have to do any one thing to break clutter. Right? Correct. Uh, there is no silver bullet to breaking clutter because it's a combination of a great insight, it's a combination of a good creative, it's a combination of uh, a very smart media spend, it's a combination of a very voluminous media spend, and it's about consistency. And in today's day and age, it's about having a um, an ability to take a storyline and to consistently hit your audience with it in different and innovative ways so the fact of the matter is that if you look back at some of the greatest campaigns that people have loved there mm. have been the zuzus and there have been the amazing come home in a maruti diwali campaigns which have been completely bereft of any celebrities those campaigns have had deep high spends high volume high frequency cricket based cricket approached campaigns which have really stayed on with consumers but there has been an insight there there has been an intelligent creative there there's been an intelligent story there at the same mm. time there have been fantastic celebrity campaigns which have really done beautifully utilizing mm. the celebrity as maybe sometimes a character maybe sometimes the celebrity itself or herself mm. or himself but the fact is that there is no single silver bullet so the truth is that any marketer or any agency or any agent like myself coming in and saying this is the one thing that you must do and you are going to win is making a fool out of themselves and their and their client and partner that's the honest answer fantastic this is a full marketing class so what you're saying is just signing up celebrity is not the answer the question is how you use this celebrity and whether you're adhering to the basic principles of marketing in order to meet your brand and business objectives Hundred percent, Vani. And you tell me, you've been a marketer for two decades plus, right? The same way people will sit and say, "Yar, why don't I do a deal with Times of India and buy four front page ads?" The same question. Whether you use a celebrity, you don't use a celebrity. Will you say that's a perfect answer? You can sit and argue and say two crore people are going to sit and look at your ad. Is that a perfect solution to making sure you've broken clutter? Is that a perfect solution to making sure you've hit the top of the funnel? Completely not. So there is no one size fits all. The same way, if you say. I'll buy this much amount of TRP on a cricket sponsorship. I can assure you, even that is not the perfect answer. Yes, you'll get a certain amount of awareness, but that's not yeah. necessarily going to break you clutter. Because if your content and your creativity and your campaign is not memorable, and there isn't an insight that you have found, and there isn't some sort of clear, consistent communication that you have hit upon various touch points that your audience interacts with, you're going to fail. And where the brand is not meaningfully integrated. the biggest pitfall that uh, agencies and clients fall into is that they would sign up uh, a big name like let's say a shahrukh khan the audience will see the ad and say yaar wo shahrukh khan ka naya ad aaya na bada cool lag raha hai usme bahut stud lag raha hai usme 100% but wo ad to shahrukh khan ka ad tha tha ye to bada achhi baat hai shahrukh khan to bada stud lag raha tha lekin wo ad kiska tha wo jis jiska ad tha uske to paise waste ho gaye 
and I'll tell you, I mean, you're taking an example, right? The truth of the matter is, you take two campaigns of Mr. Khan, you'll take a campaign of Big Basket, and you'll take a campaign of, let's say, the recent Hot Star campaign. And the mm. fact of the matter is that uh, in the Hot Star campaign, there's also Shah Rukh Khan. There's also an insight over there to say that a very fun and cute and comical insight that Tanmay and Gang have written, which is to say that, you know, Hot Star's got all the biggest films of all the biggest stars, except Shah Rukh's are not there. And they've made a mm. play on that, saying that, boss, sab ke hai. so they've actually played on the negative to come out with the positive. But the truth mm. is, if you look at the Big Basket campaign, it doesn't stay on in people's minds, no matter how much there was deep amount of media spent, because one, you couldn't even make a relatability there. You couldn't mm. relate to the fact that Shah Rukh Khan is actually sitting and ordering food on Big Basket. And if the frequency is mixed with a couple of other ads and the media spend is not intelligent, you've lost your audience. Absolutely. And equally, where you pick up a really big name, hoping to big break clutter with that big name, one also has to be mindful of the fact that big names also come with a lot of clutter themselves in the sense that, you know, most of these big celebrities have a whole lot of brand endorsements. I have to work much harder as a brand with my creative to make sure that the brand is equally remembered. Shah Rukh Khan will have a whole lot of brand endorsements. How do you make sure that, you know, exclusivity, it may be exclusivity in the category, but exclusivity in the mind because a consumer is not looking at categories. The consumer at the end of the day will say, Wo ad yaad hai ki nahi yaad hai. Us ad mein message kya hai? And like you correctly gave this example, whose ad was it? At the end of the day, that purpose must be served. And what is the messaging that they're trying to communicate? Bang on money. It's the art of storytelling, right? It's the art hmm. of storytelling. And I can tell you that, let's take for example, in every major cricketing season, there will be one category that will end up being the major spending category. Okay. A few mm. years ago, it was e-commerce, which continues to be the case in a rotating cycle. Then in the middle, there was fintech. Then in the middle, there was gaming. Now there's very heavily edtech. The truth mm. is that there are 10 edtech players who are sitting and sponsoring various IPL teams and various IPL structures right now. I can't be able to ask you which of those edtech brands have actually stood out. And the truth of the matter is, it doesn't matter if they're celebrities or not. The fact of the matter is, is the quality of the storytelling, the quality of the insight that you've provided, something that has actually stayed with the audience to a certain extent, yes or no. And secondly, sometimes that's just the luck of the draw. Your category may just be that heavily riddled with so many different uh, pieces of communication from competitors. Then you have to think of doing something very, very different. And I think yes. that's where... Uh, surprisingly in an era where there are so many marketing innovations capable thanks to technology i feel like there isn't enough usage of that technology as uh, one could hope to have given what's available out there so tell me about this very bit which is about the usage of technology in order to sign up celebrities how do i make sure that it leans more on science rather than just oh, mujhe to shahrukh khan bada acha lagta hai let's bring him on how does a brand ideally make the right decision on celebrity? See, I think if you've got the time, I think what usually happens is in big asset decisions like this, marketeers tend to take fairly knee-jerk and fairly late decisions, right? So one, I would always advise that before you take any decision like this for a brand, first of all, give yourself six months. And the truth mm -hmm. is, Vani, I remember when you were at Pepsi, at that Correct. point in time, you guys used to make your AOPs and you knew in January who you wanted to sign in June. Right. Correct. And the planning, the, the, the discussions, the research, the market intel, the appropriateness, and then the logistics of working the right celebrity used to come in. And I think that Absolutely. amount of rigor is very critical. That's got nothing to do with technology. That's just good mm. planning. Mm. But okay, let's put that out of the picture because you specifically asked me about technology. I think today mm. the fact of the matter is that uh, thanks to digital, thanks to insights that one gets about the consumers, utilizing various demographic insights that one has from the guys who are looking into our lives, namely Facebook and Google, there is enough and more available out there for the marketer to be able to characterize and create a sort of persona of the kind mm. of audience that you want to speak to. And then that persona could be linked in some level to what that celebrity linkage could be. Now, here's where there is no one size fits all once again, because the truth of the mm. matter is that you're not looking for a celebrity who relates always to your customer. You always have to peg yourself one level above. You have to look at an aspirational aspect many a times or you have to look at something that your audience or your brand doesn't naturally provide. If you're an insurance brand, you want to bring a little bit of youthfulness. Perhaps you want to bring in a little bit of real world characteristics. Perhaps if you're an FMCG brand, you want to bring in a sense of trust. You want to bring in a sense of every man. You want to bring in a sense of I'm your friend, right? So the truth of the matter is that 
celebrities today are able to give you characteristics that maybe your brand is not able to carry or if you're a legacy brand is able to give you a refresher or if you're a brand new brand is able to actually give your brand a little bit of meat and bones and give them something that they don't have and take a leap perhaps one year or two years uh, in time because you've attached yourself to somebody who has a body of work and is seen a certain way so i think that's yeah. where technology can play a very smart role in sort of giving you those analytics and giving you those demographic linkages that perhaps yeah. uh, you know a standard campaign cannot and then you combine that with intelligent link testing and all the other advertising technology that's been existing now for some time with the top agencies and the top brands have access to them it's all become so democratized you combine those two learnings and there's very little reason why you shouldn't win do you see a lot of clients also today asking you for personalities on how different celebrities are perceived to be by the common man in the sense let's say if i were to pick up tapsi pannu would a client ask you for give me the word cloud around tapsi pannu or 100%. give me the word cloud for let's say radhika apte they'd have the word cloud already with them vani i think clients have become mm. smart in that mm. sense they would have that access and what cloud. else would you look at so there's the word cloud you'd look at typically the social media numbers most clients i've seen would want to see the social media numbers one of the things that most clients i've seen especially in the startup world tend to be more carried away by are these offbeat film celebrities so that my brand looks fresh and right. like my brand has a different take Uh, right. from the mainstream yeah. and uh, the other big determinant is just the social media numbers yeah. tell me a little about a lot of these uh, new startup brands who have been recently or who have acquired a whole lot of funding suddenly i yeah. find that there is this rush to sign up a celebrity because it's like a statement to make i've got a big agency i've got a big celebrity and now i'm on i've i've arrived <laughs> <laughs> See the 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 death knell to any entrepreneur, marketer, or anybody is simply two words. Vani, it's called vanity metric. Okay, mm. and I would guard everybody, and I guard myself of that, my team of that all the time to say, do not get lost in vanity metrics in your business. And I think a lot of what you're mentioning, very rightly so, mm. are vanity metrics because the truth yeah. is, if you're not smart and intelligent about the decisions you're taking and why you're taking them they, they can end up biting you in the posterior pretty badly so mm. i would say to answer your question specifically yes if a brand is chosen a particular face or is inclined towards a face they're asking for deep data which breaks down okay if they're a bollywood actress what is their audience breakup okay what is the kind of and this is the information that many times we provide to them we will say hmm. that you know your audience break up for example these are people from this part of the country are watching their movies more people from this part yes. of the country are watching their shows on ott more people from hmm. this part of the country are relating to them better when their youtube videos are coming out and you can actually get hmm. that data to say where is the audience really coming from so i think hmm. that's a very important insight i think just social media following is a vanity metric because the truth is what is much more important than social media following is quality of content which is objective not subjective it's not objective but engagement is objective frequency of content is objective consistency of content and having some sort of narrative thread to what that content is is also important from time to time if the influencer or celebrity is making a certain statement about who they are in their content mm. so i think you have mm. to look at all of that and one of the key things that i feel which is i feel often missed and it's something that we spend a lot of time on is remember mm. that you are signing a talent for work that's going to come and in today's hyper hyper speedy media landscape the last piece of content is forgotten in as early as a week to two weeks but i'm saying that's also a function of uh, how hard your creative is working now because if your creative is forgotten in a week then all of that money spent forget production and creative costs etc the money spent on the celebrity is also waste just think about it there are so many brands that are signing up all of these celebrities there's this new model i'm going to talk to you about that as well where sure. in exchange for uh, the face instead of um, cash down you know startups are offering equity in exchange so the financial models yeah. on signing up celebrities yeah. are also changing yes over here do you also see that in order to bring on celebrity bring on a celebrity where the resources are not as vast as in the traditional age the likes of the unilevers and the lux when you know massive contracts used to be signed up for over 3 and 5 years and all of that yes. now a lot of the new age guys are also signing up celebrities with non exclusive contracts for only x number of social media posts on only certain platforms with 
blah, blah, blah caveat so that I can restrict my spends so that I'm not signing up for five crores. This celebrity is now accessible to me for as little as 30 lakhs also or as little as even five lakhs, depending on the nature of the deal. Do you see a lot of that? It is absolutely going to happen and Vani, it's going to only increase because the truth of the matter is that startups are today, depending on the kind of startup you're creating, also very driven very strongly by financial models. Ultimately, Mm. you must remember venture capital and private equity has a huge role to play in the way startups grow. And whilst Mm. there are some stellar venture capital organizations out there who balance the need to create value with the actual joy of building a company itself. I think that many of the decisions that they've taken are uh, based on financial metrics, which are purely on the basis of valuation. But that's a completely different podcast, right? So I will spend my time in telling you that, yes, those models are becoming more and more innovative. They're becoming more and more diversified. And the truth is that they can provide a tremendous amount of disproportionate value. Vani, I'll tell you, why won't it happen? If you remember a decade yeah. or decade and a half ago, do you remember every single startup was running towards Times of India to do brand capital deals? Times of India was picking up anywhere between 10 to 20% and offering yes. front page Times of India. Yes. How is this any different? It's a phenomenal media asset. It's offering yeah. you a disproportionate ability to reach out to an audience. It is something that will open. Remember, when you work with a celebrity or influencer, you're not just opening that door to their content. Because they yeah. have a flywheel effect to everything that they do, right? When you come out with a mm. movie, it affects radio, it affects satellite, it affects OTT, it affects theaters, it affects print, it affects every single media asset. And once you have that asset in your disposable, you will get mm. better deals with every one of those distributors as well. So actually, it's a fantastic thing to have on your yes. cap table. Fully and agree. That's what they're doing. Is there any one brand that you can think of that did exactly what you've just described really well in the recent times? I think that you will find, I don't know if you're reading about the phenomenal sort of, I won't call the acquisition spree phenomenal because acquisitions are a function of access to capital. But the way that Darpan and MyGlam are approaching the entire personal beauty care market and what Mm. you're going to see coming out from the work they're doing with Shraddha Kapoor is going to be mm. really interesting. They're actually activating every single part of our life. Okay. It's absolutely out. But what's again very interesting is they're not doing a conventional approach to brand endorsement. They're actually Achoo. saying that for every woman's skin type, the way that their science is coming out, they're saying that Shraddha's new line is catered to and is actually customized to every single woman individually. So you know what, what was happening with Ayurveda and what was happening with medicinal skincare. Now in beauty also, it's starting to happen where Maidlam is saying that We have a shade for you irrespective. But how are they using Shraddha over here? The point I'm trying Hmm. to say is that they are going to integrate into her social media content, into her movie content. She has a bunch of other initiatives that she does personally, which is something that you're going to see about. They've actually activated her entire personal friend circle who are also Hmm. celebrities and influencers and found ways to create interaction points there. So the point I'm trying to make is that they didn't approach that association as saying this is an endorsement. It's actually mm-hmm. Shadda's own strategic equity in the company. But what mm-hmm. is more exciting and interesting is the way that they're opening up her entire world. It's very new. So you'll start Fantastic. to see it. But it is an Fantastic. example of something. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of a couple of more examples. That there are actually lots of them. It's just that this space is relatively new right now. Mm-hmm. right? The intelligent activation of celebrities by brands who own equity in their companies is something that is now starting to become more and more diversified than just the straight print campaign video so Hmm. on and so forth Hmm. very nice very nice i can't wait to see it tell me i'm shifting gears a little bit through what does one do as a brand when a celebrity lands on the hotbed of controversy (laughs) we've had so many in the past in the recent (laughs) past there have been so many I'll tell you the non-diplomatic answer, Vani, since, you know, Uh. this should be of use to everyone that's listening to it. I think the truth of the matter is that in our country, you cannot separate celebrity Uh. from controversy. And the reason for that is, and the truth is, we're not unique to that. It's the same in the US. It's the same in the UK. It's the same in various other parts of the world where there's a free and active democracy and a free and active press. Is that the flip side to a very active celebrity culture is that there will be a negative expression of that fandom, right? And that has a role to play in the kind of access and the kind of things that anybody on the new mediums like social media or in the mediums of our judiciary can take advantage of. So I would actually say, and I'll try not to make this too detailed, but I would actually say that for any brand that has got a celebrity who's landed themselves in the hotbed, it's always a good idea to wait 
and never get into a knee jerk reaction because mm. the fact is that you have to surround yourself just like you would do with any other legal decision get yourself the best advice as to how this is impacting your brand get the best advice as to how this is affecting your contract right and make sure that you're biding your time because just as fast as controversies come controversies go and the truth is that and the, the new, new one will come up and there will be a new celebrity who it's, will yeah and you don't want to find yourself in a knee jerk reaction because the truth is once again why do we block ourselves uh-huh. out to say oh this only happens with celebrities boss when the top fmcg brand in the company <laughs> finds a worm in their chocolate they don't go and shut down their brand or they don't go and shut yeah. down a hundred factories yeah. they go and do their research they go and understand what has happened they go to the law yeah. and say we will fix this why is that any different it's just an emotional uh-huh. knee jerk reaction very because smart, there's a human element smart. to it right okay so we yeah. didn't watch don't do knee jerk reactions for, for mm. anything in life forget celebrities <laughs> anything in life mm. now you tell me as an insider because you are in this business what would you say now assume that you are on my side and the client side yeah. how would you recommend that one sign up a smart contract that i am able to get you know one of the big celebrities in a way what can i do on the contract give me some smart offbeat ways of crafting a contract such that i can get biggish names at small costs so i'll tell okay let me change the question around a little bit to help you hmm. understand so what does a celebrity want out of a endorsement contract or an engagement with a brand uh, hmm. every brand marketer will tell you who's not super seasoned but you'll understand this they will tell you that it's all about the money and let me tell you it can't be further from the truth maybe when you're absolutely new in your career and you're fresh off the blocks maybe it's important but the truth is that most of the celebrities out there that you work with money is the third or the fourth criteria what is really hmm. important is what is the quality of the relationship what is the quality of the kind of work that you're putting out of course out? of course the celebrity yeah. also wants to be associated with something that makes them feel happy correct correct so correct so a celebrity would actually... rather be celebrity uh, you know be associated with a big brand that is spending shit loads of money behind that celebrity for example lakme actually created celebrities out Absolutely. of uh, a lot of the models that they picked and up. it doesn't even have to be big money vani i'll tell you what's really fun hmm. and interesting is that it can also just be really interesting really great i mean look at Yes, sure. Cred spent a hell of a lot of money on their campaign with Rahul Dravid. Do you think Rahul Dravid cares about how much money Cred paid him to do that campaign? Now, whether you like it or don't like it, whether you think it worked for the brand, doesn't think it worked for the brand. The fact of the matter is, he was part of popular culture for like six weeks straight, and part of a way that almost like it put him back on a pedestal, which was so core to his personality. It was a beautiful campaign that just happened off the back of a great. Do I completely insight. disagree with you? I think no, was, but you may disagree with what the value of your cred was. The point I'm trying to make is let's go back to the point that you're making. We'll disagree together mm. after a bit. The point I'm trying to make. Mm. is a smart contract is one where you sit with the celebrity and say this is what i want or you sit with the agent and say because you won't interact with the celebrity sit with the agent and say this is what i want to achieve i understand that i have certain assets in the terms of time and in terms of number of hours in terms of amount of social media that i want to get out of the celebrity help me maximize that but this is the way i'm going to ensure that your celebrity xyz is getting what they also want out of the association what is it that you want out of the association let's discuss that a celebrity might say i want a certain amount of media mileage a celebrity might say look i want to be part of a campaign that's a little memorable a celebrity might say look i want to do something which is different can you put me in a music video instead of creating a standard tvc and you'll never have those conversations if you don't actually engage with the talent the problem yeah. is that brand marketers sit and look at celebrities like they are work for hire what you have to realize is that they have an ability to drive popular culture if you get their insight because they're also building communities and they're also building fans and they understand the nuance of their audience very intelligently that's how they pick scripts that's how they pick directors that's how they pick producers yeah. there's a method to that man is trust that a little bit and if you go into that insight and say okay this is what i'd like to achieve what is it you're looking at you'll find innovative ways to come out with it so now to make it super tangible you should have social media on your contract so that you're getting some value out of it some celebrities will ask you to pay for it you are 100% should pay for it the other problem that i see and you'll realize is that brands today just expect that the personal social media of a celebrity is theirs to own it's not mm-hmm. it's an mm-hmm. asset that the celebrities have built you have to respect it now in mm-hmm. that respectfulness if you get some value out of it great mm-hmm. so number one have the understanding of what you need the other thing i will mm-hmm. say is that today as opposed to 5 years ago vani when you and i used to do endorsements together or before that 
today you can do a much smarter contract where you don't have to buy a large amount of inventory you can buy less amount of days and then you can do a pro rata acquisition of more time from them over the course of a two year three year contract mm-hmm. i do advise brands to do longer term contracts yeah so talk to me a little to... more about this so tell me I... a little more about this Yeah. See, whilst the market is moving towards shorter term contracts in the form of endorsements, I have always hmm. believed that you should have longer term contracts because exactly what we were discussing earlier, celebrities and media is moving so fast that it's very difficult to build that brand and build that linkage in the audience's mind that this celebrity is equal to this brand. But if you do consistent smart communication utilizing that celebrity and utilizing that brand, there is a certain affinity that gets built that you want to ride upon. and when yeah. you can purchase that time without having to lock in 4 days 5 days 6 days if you can do a 2 year 2 day contract and say i'll purchase your day 3 and day 4 from the celebrity on a pro rata basis perhaps in the latter half of year 2 where i have one more media cycle to choose from why wouldn't you you're protecting your yeah. cash flow you're ensuring that if things don't go well you've not spent beyond a certain point you have the option of moving on to somebody else or dropping a celebrity ambassador strategy altogether and you're ensuring that the celebrity is also feeling like boss these guys are willing to back me and do something with me over a period of time so if the celebrity's value goes up remember you don't pay more on the pro rata amount mm-hmm. you still pay what you paid on the day one when you signed the celebrity so you're mm-hmm. actually hedging your bet very intelligently that if the stock goes up you should immediately cash in on it for example 8 days in one year yeah. do let's say 2 days per year and do it over 3 years Yes. Do a three-year contract with two days in a year or one day in the year. Absolutely. You would be able to bring down your absolute outlay, and you'd possibly get a lot more from the celebrity while still meeting your brand objectives by being able to use the celebrity smartly within that one day or two days that you're accessing her for. Can okay, tell me what else? What else are the new age brands doing that is different from what's been done before? I'm talking about. <clears throat> what do traditional brands for example let's say the way a dabber might negotiate where i'll do this again okay i'm saying so you tell me if there is any meat over here dhruv otherwise we can even skip this bar, uh, this part which so, is there was a traditional way of signing up celebrities yeah. which was do long term contracts a whole lot of number of days yeah. long tvcs or yeah. lots of tvcs yeah. and typically used for a lot of outdoor a lot of posm possibly even packaging yeah. now the new age brands are looking at shorter term contracts lesser number of days non exclusive probably inclined more towards social media like you correctly said probably inclined more towards where the celebrities natural fandom is also inclined for example if i were to sign up a celeb in punjab Yeah. you know i'd more likely do a music video yeah uh, we know that most of the punjabi influencers most of the community over there is naturally inclined more towards uh, music yeah. are there other such regional nuances number 1 and number 2 what would be the other ways that the new age contracts that you're seeing as of now in the last 2 years or the last 3 years been different from what has been done let's say 7 or 8 years back That's a great question. I think I'm seeing four or five trends which are interesting. I think number one area that I'm seeing is that there's a very strong uh, movement towards collaborations, lines, merchandising, partnerships where the association is not just an endorsement, but there is a sense of the celebrity's personality that is coming into the brand, even if it's for a short period of time, to be able to get a marketing spike. so hmm. you know if you're a brand and you do a brand x female celebrity line of makeups right and right. you hit that right in the festive season and there's something unique to that sku and something unique to that product proposition riding that wave for a extensive 3 month period showing the celebrity a disproportionate amount of media value from there and seeing how that marketing spike works for you because a big play in d2c brands which is a lot of what you're talking about is about customer acquisition and then the game goes to customer retention which is the is is you know from whatever i've heard in certain categories it's harder to acquisition than it is to do reten- retention right so and Correct. of course that that changes from brand to brand but i'm giving you an insight there so i think these collaborations are a very interesting path that brands are taking now and they're looking to agents like us and agencies like ours to sort of give them that advice on what they can do the second piece that i'm seeing which is very interesting is that brands are looking to when they activating on social 
they're looking at sort of i go back to the flywheel effect right they'll take a sponsorship of a core ip the worst example of it is that you do a sponsorship of big boss and then if your celebrity is on your brand you make sure that your celebrity actually has a play in big boss related to your brand right mm. that's the worst example but the better examples of that are that if you've and i say worst simply because not that i have a problem with big boss i think it's a mass reaching phenomenal mm. super asset mm. on television but i say worst simply because mm. uh, that's the i think the no brainer right it requires no thinking whatsoever it's a simple right. plug and play and it's about having the media dollars to make it happen but i think what i find um, interesting is to see how if you let's say you're a sponsor of a cricketing tournament right if you're a sponsor of let's say a, a really interesting asset like let's say you're a sponsor on a big on ground festival like an nh7 weekender how do you make sure that your celebrity is activated in an interesting way in that particular asset rather than utilizing them for a traditional way i'll tell you my favorite example from last year was puma signed sara ali khan and their entire campaign was this wonderful empowered focused on women campaign and instead of utilizing sara for like a big press conference or for like a big dealer meet which would have been the standard way of activating and motivating one part of your distribution network that puma could have done puma actually mm. invited sara to actually attend what is today one of india's if not india's biggest youth festival called the under 25 summit and they actually had a conversation between sara two other influencers and the marketing head of puma in front of 20000 young people and they actually mm. sat and spoke about concepts of gender sat and spoke about concepts of women equality and women empowerment sat and spoke about examples of sara's own life where she spoke about her own body positivity issues in a manner and i thought that was really interesting because that's significant amount of money that you're putting mm. in a one hour event that's not necessarily televised and will have a digital footprint but for puma's audience and for the kind of brand equity that they wanted to build that was one of the yeah. smartest ways for them to activate it and then i found out later that one of their highest yeah. sale markets happens to be bangalore this event was in bangalore so it was a very intelligent activation from point to peer to say here's how we're going to engage with our celebrity because we want her to be real which is one of sara's most enduring aspects that she's a very real celebrity and we want to bring her touch and feel right in front of our audience rather than just keep two screens distance from her and her entire audience and that's what puma wants to be right and i think that mm-hmm. that's another really interesting way that brands are sort of i think finding disruptive ways to utilize talent and i think what's going to happen vani and i'm talking a little bit into the future now i think that the digitization of a lot of interesting assets like i think what's going to happen with nfts right huh. uh, we are going to find some really interesting brand x celebrity assets come out from there because what's happened is and you'll remember this is that ultimately there are only three or four things that a brand can do with a celebrity there isn't really that much you can only extend it out to that many ways right but i think that with many of these digital assets coming out and with the future being a virtual world that we're going to live in along with believing in our physical world which is what the metaverse etc is at i think that this is going to be a very interesting new way for celebrities and brands to come together and put out assets and put out ways for consumers to own a piece of their favorite brands while owning a piece of their favorite celebrities in a collaboration that's short lived that has scarcity attached to it and will be gone tomorrow which is where the entire tradeability aspect comes in it's very early even i am learning to understand it but this is going to be upon us in as early as 12 to 18 months within india itself no but you over here you're talking about what dhruv what you just described yeah what exactly did did puma do with uh, sara ali khan they did this event where they talked about women's empowerment you said so it was an event for under 25 largely under 25 audiences it was a 3 day event that takes place every single year it's called the under 25 summit the theme of that summit is celebrate confusion so it's an event that comes in which tells young people do not be afraid to say that i don't have a single linear path of where i want to go that's the core theme so they curate this event curates some of the best speakers sort of intellectuals as well as content creators from across the country and across the globe and brings young people to attend it's like an edutainment event right that's the event itself now puma was a sponsor of that event now at that event they could have done a hundred things you know how celebrity contracts work if they have a two year four day contract with sara ali khan you know how much Correct. each day of that is worth and when they Correct. use sara for one event they actually using her for a full day because that's how celebrity contracts work you don't say i'll use one hour and i have 23 hours left yes. if you use one yes. hour you utilize yes. the day so what Correct. they did at that particular event is they actually got sara to come down and 
through conversation reinforce the core theme of what Puma's actual endorsement engagement with Sara was all about in front of a 20,000 core audience that was sitting in front of her and then utilize the snippets of that piece of content in various social media channels across the country to make sure that they had a digital footprint that was not pure advertising because Sara sitting in a press conference is a very different very engineered sort of event but Sara in front of 20,000 young people sitting and talking about her own insecurities and how she overcame it in Puma gear in a way where she's laughing at herself in conversation with young people herself Mm -hmm. is a very Mm -hmm. different form of advertising so you understand Mm -hmm. it's still storytelling it is still Mm -hmm. way of saying that boss I am a Puma face but it's a much more organic much more real uh, far more interesting sort of way uh, in which that communication is done and and I've not seen a lot of that take place with brands otherwise where everything is super engineered and I would say very, very uh, structured. You know what I mean? And I think that's Fantastic. where uh, these different. I like the great example. When should one not sign a celebrity? When one is out of ideas. Hmm. And one is looking and, for the lazy uh, approach. When one is looking for a lazy approach. Very good. Very good. And what would be a great example? But you've just talked about that actually. Can you, would you openly talk about examples of brands that have made an absolute mess of celebrity usage? <laughs> Let me not take <laughs> brand names. I think that there's been enough laziness that I have, that I consistently see in communication out there. And then who's to say? I think ultimately it's not just people will say, Ke boss, mujhe sirf awareness create karna tha aur mere campaign awareness create kar diya. And there are 1.5 billion people in this country, but there are only 100 celebrities of note. And if that celebrity helps my brand even get a little bit of disproportionate awareness, then why not? The money mm. I've spent versus the ability to do that is far outreaches it. And also just sheer disregard or uh, not required to then do anything truly disruptive. Na? That's uh-huh. done. That's great. It's over. But you've lost an opportunity. I think that's the only thing I will tell marketers that yeah. don't lose that opportunity. And the truth is that there are people like us, there are people like you know agencies and who are very, very, very keen to scratch the surface and understand your brand and help you find that insight that will allow you to be differentiated in the market. And I think searching for that conversation, making that little bit of additional effort, I think can really, really go a long way. Mm. And I think that's, you know, I'll tell you about a really interesting campaign that's coming up. There's a legacy insurance brand that wants to talk about the fact that even though they are, they've been around for as long as they have, they still yeah. work hard, like they are an outsider or they are a complete, like they don't have the name that they do. And what they've mm. done is they've tied up with a celebrity mm. who has had one of the longest legacies uh, in the business. I can't take names, but they've basically mm. said, we are, we understand and respect each other because we're willing to go the extra mile, no matter who we are and no matter what our legacy is, because uh, we believe in a maintaining that legacy and we never take it for granted. And I think that's a beautiful mm. insight. It's wonderfully done. It's playing on the fact that, listen, we are who we are because this is our name and we're proud of our name. But at the same time saying that we don't take it for granted and we're very certainly nice. not going to do it. And I think that's and you're going to see that campaign very soon. It's done by yours truly. And it's a beautiful insight. It's simply put, it's got a bit of tongue in cheek to it. It's with a mega celebrity who is super loved in this country. And I think that that's a very smart way of doing it. And the, the, the great thing about great creative is that once you see it, it feels really simple. But there has been thought that's gone behind it, which allows you to get to that particular point. Acha, listen, I want to ask you one other question, which is, do you think the lines between the way we traditionally saw celebrities and what we're calling influencers now are blurring? What is an influencer? An influencer today, as we are signing them up, every new age brand is talking about influencer marketing. It's a big, big, big hot topic. Yeah. And everybody's talking about influencers, getting influencers. And everybody first looks at the numbers, just as we did for celebrities as well, right? You wanted yeah. one of the top five or the top seven, and you looked at numbers and you looked at how many movies and how many uh, TV serials and blah, blah, blah. Similarly, so for influencers now in this internet age, they're all looking at social media numbers. Yeah. How are influencers today different from celebrities in the sense that today with the new ASCII guidelines, in any case, influencers are also required to announce this as sponsored post. Yes. Do you think the lines between the two are blurring? Um, you can buy an influencer for money. You can buy uh, Amitabh Bachchan for money. Yeah, it's absolutely true. And I think that it's the democratization of fame 
at one level. The second thing that it's done is that all of this has only been possible because of the sheer amount of access to the internet that the geofication has done to this country. So this is only going to increase because there's a large audience still A, waiting to get on to access on mobile and B, the amount of communication they get will further amplify. I do believe, Vani, that in the last year and a half, outside of, you know, cricket has still been in front of our eyes as audiences, but Bollywood has pretty much been shut down from a theatrical perspective. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens when cinemas reopen and there is mm-hmm. options that come in front of audiences to go back and actually watch their traditional stars in front of them. But having said that, our ability to consume celebrity culture as human beings, it's uncapped, right? So the truth is that I could enjoy and watch a big celebrity star's movie at 7 p.m. in the evening and I can come back and binge on reels from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. in the morning because I'm just having fun getting entertained 10 seconds at a time. So I think there is space and value at every single level. Yes, the lines are getting blurred, but I will say that there is more and more access to be able to influence your consumer in ways beyond standard celebrity culture. Which means Mm. that what I love about that is that if you look at it like a funnel or if you look at it like a pyramid, there is a way to touch each element of your audience's thinking depending on how you want to approach them. So a celebrity can make you aware of your product, but an influencer can perhaps add a certain layer of relatability to them. And that's where I think the big conversation now is that, you know, oh, but are influencers also trustworthy today because they're also, you know, available for sale on everything. Yeah. I think that there will be a consistent range and number of content creators. The word influencer is starting to get a bad name. Creators, yes. storytellers, that's where they're going towards. People who love their craft and want to tell great stories, utilizing their social media, those will be the ones that brands will ultimately have long-term relationships with. And those will be the Absolutely. guys that they'll work with on a, on a regular basis because... They're not existing because of their next brand deal. They're existing because they just want to create great content. And that's where brands will want to be a part of their life. And I think that's what we're seeing. I think it's too early to make any prediction, predictions. I'm not a guru, but I do think that we're going to see a wider scope of influence marketing, not influencer, influence marketing hmm. under which celebrities also stand, under which influencers and storytellers also come in just because of this, like I said, democratization of fame that's taken place. You're absolutely right. And, you know, I want to tell you this little anecdote. We were doing these uh, groups in uh, small town. Yeah. Uh, and we were talking about soap. And uh, one of these girls, she said that, I don't want to give the name of the celebrity, but she said that, Usme kya badi baat hai, unko bhi to paise se kharit sakte ho. Wo paise unko de de to, wo kuch bhi bol denge ad mein. So I'm saying that today, it's, the fact that I was quite shocked that even in this small town, this girl said exactly this, ki wo paise deke to wo kuch bhi bol denge. I think in today's world, while yes, India is a celebrity crazy nation and will continue to be so, but in today's context where everybody is available for sale, including influencers who now have to declare, like you correctly said, I think both celebrities, as we traditionally know them, whether Bollywood or cricketers or musicians or influencers or content creators or storytellers, everybody will equally have to work much harder on building credibility because everybody knows they're available on sale. So, you know, the demand is going to be or the ask is going to be as much on the celebrity of any kind to make sure that what they are presenting of the brand is presented in a way that is credible. It's it's an ask not just on the advertiser, but an ask on the celebrity and the personality that they themselves build that I know as a brand that when this person speaks, it's going to be consumed as credible content. And Vani, it's such a beautiful thing you said. And the only thing I want to say is that whilst it's a critical insight, I'm a huge fan of history. Nothing Mm. of what you said has not existed before the internet age. When we were growing up, what was the way of disparaging something which was... Remember the words we used to use when we would hear hear a song and you'd say, Uh. what are the other songs of this band? And what would you say? No, no, it's a one-hit wonder. What was the Uh. words that we used to use when we used to hear about someone who was just dying to get some sort of exposure, his 15 seconds of fame? Now that 15 Uh. seconds of fame doesn't get used because the truth is 15 seconds can give you ridiculous fame. But the fact is that from time immemorial, 
we as a humanity as a civilization have veered towards a slightly more robust sense of grounding when we want to get influenced by something today because mm-hmm. of the way the media landscape has changed yes we have a much shorter reaction complex going on in our heads but ultimately yes. we will still veer after something that makes us feel that there's trust there so nothing has yes. changed people who stick to their guns stay as to who they are consistently put out good content have a core messaging and positioning to who they are they will win in the long run and yeah. uh, that doesn't matter if you're a creator doesn't matter if you're a celebrity doesn't matter if you're anybody performance is going to matter quality of what you do is going to matter but uh, maintaining a certain brand is what's going to give you consistency and success so yes. nothing has changed to be honest it's the same it's just the world is around us uh, the way it distributes changes but the people are the same yeah over here i disagree with you a little bit i think earning trust is now becoming a little going to become and continuing to become a little harder because mm. uh, the audiences are also a little more skeptic while we all want to see pretty stars i might love rithik roshan and i might be happy to see him even in a surgery ad <laughs> but at the same time <laughs> he will have to work a little harder to win my trust with surgery yeah. the other thing we have to be very mindful of is that there's many many uh, types of consumers out there so i have to check myself when i'm thinking about how i feel about a particular campaign or something versus the audience that i'm trying to talk to and uh, that's a very important differentiation that one also has to keep in mind uh, which is why i'm a big believer in also doing not focus groups as such but getting a perspective outside of your own youth i also just feel different gender you're different very types. smart and diplomatic through i wish, no, I, wish I, could, i could be as smooth as you are you're so <laughs> cool and you see you say what you have to in the nicest sounding way you have such a gift of the gab chalo okay this has been fantastic i hope you liked my show and if you did please do consider subscribing i also have a youtube channel by the same name marketing by vani please do check that out too thank you how badly could you screw up one line okay so i did screw up My YouTube channel is called Marketing with Vani, the same name as this podcast. 